May uh, Fan. I'm uh, co-chairing this session uh, about the EOSCAB technical workshop. Uh, this was a long-standing activity uh, started uh, uh, last year in June with the first uh, technical workshop we had uh, in Amsterdam physically at that time, luckily. Uh, this time, unfortunately, we are not able to run this uh, uh, in person, so we decided to, to have a different scope for this uh, second round of, of workshop. And uh, the main objective of this today would be to try to get uh, all of you on board with the activity we have done in this past month trying to uh, provide you a bit of details on the more um, I mean, advanced uh, um, technical uh, specification that we have in our, um, I mean, that we have provided already and uh, they are already public for you to be uh, read and eventually provide comment. Uh, the agenda, it's very packed today, so I would uh, give the floor very soon to our um, first speakers. Uh, the idea is that uh, um, for each of uh, the presentation, you obviously may ask a question, but we hopefully uh, uh, level at the end of the session a kind of uh, interactive uh, uh, slots for question and answer on the overall uh, work that we have done. Um, so if you don't have any specific, uh, um, I mean, comment or question, I would pass the floor very quickly to uh, Marika and then all Fernandez that are the first one in, uh, in our agenda today. Uh, they will talk us about the uh, cloud computer and orchestrate for um, technical specification. And all come from EGIU, I guess that most of you know him already. And uh, Marika comes from ANFN and is working on the orchestration in cloud computing since years. So uh, um, please, Marika, and then all the floor is yours. Uh, hi, everyone. So this is Anon. I hope you can, you can hear me fine. I'm sharing my screen with the presentation. Um, can, you, can you see the slides? Perfect, and all, and uh, okay. I can hear you very well. So, yeah, okay, okay. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Yachinto. So, as as Yachinto was was saying, this uh, a short presentation between between myself uh, and all Fernandez working for the EI Foundation and, and Marika Antonacci, who's working for for NFN, and we will cover two of the TCOM areas, which are the cloud computing and the and the orchestrator. So, uh, I have this first slide to to put things in, into, into kind of perspective. We have the cloud compute uh, containers and orchestration technical area that covers the lower layers of this diagram. And uh, here we have three uh, specifications. The first one would be the infrastructure as a service virtual, manage, virtual machine management. Then we have the infrastructure as a service container management. So that's the second one. We have a set of ideally set of providers delivering this kind of functionality over a distributed infrastructure. And on top, we have the third um, technical specification of this area, which is the infrastructure as a service orchestration that would deal with the management of these providers in a uh, joint coordinated way. And then on top, we have the area that uh, Marika is leading, which is the Path Solutions Technical Area. And we have here the Platform as a Service Orchestration. So I will, I will go into this first three, and then Marika will take over and explain the, uh, her area. So I will go quite quickly, because <laughs> the, the time we have is, is quite limited. Uh, it's a lot of information, but I try to summarize it at, uh, as much as possible, and, and I hope that if you have any questions, we can, we can discuss later. So starting with the first one, the Cloud Infrastructure as a Service Virtual Machine Management. This is basically providing access to computing resources as virtual machines via an API. So it's a, a cloud uh, service that delivers you virtual machines. And in conjunction, you normally have block storage, network, 
and these kind of auxiliary things that help you to have persistency and connectivity with the virtual machines. So here we have on a scheme of what we expect. We have um, a system that has an infrastructure service API. With that, you manage different VMs that get us started from a set of virtual machine images and get associated some block storage. And normally you have a virtual machine management user that is the one creating this infrastructure and you have at, at the other end some platform or end users that will interact with whatever thing these people have deployed here. Focusing on the interoperability for this specification, we have three big areas here. So the first one would be the, uh, having an API, API based access. We prefer open or standard APIs. There are several APIs here, proprietary and, 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 and open. So the idea is as open as uh, the, the, mo the, the more open you are, the, the better. So here we have a clear example, OpenStack would be a quite open API. So that's preferred. Um, the APIs, whatever APIs that's used by, by the system should be supported by the orchestrators in the, in the higher layer. Actually, that means almost anything is supported because we have a, a, a quite good uh, support for, for, for both commercial proprietary and uh, APIs and, and, and open APIs here in this layer. So this kind of, uh, almost anything is, is allowed. And one thing is having just a, a graphical user interface dashboard is not enough for interoperability. You really need to have API access to the system Otherwise, it's, it's not interoperable with others. Then in the AI, of course, you need to be compliant with the EOSHAP AI. That basically means, in this case, uh, com being compliant with OpenID Connect and following all the recommendations that uh, the guidelines ha have. And then we have a third area, which would be the federation. And here, we expect that the system can, be, can, be, can provide virtual machine image management and, and, and can allow to synchronize images from, from the external world. So you can have the same uh, virtual machine images everywhere. And also we expect that you are able to expose the usage of the infrastructure to the EOS Hub accounting following a set of, of uh, standard records that we have for, for exposing that information. And we have implementations in the EOS Hub for, for several systems, mainly OpenStack, Open Nebula, which are the, the main ones installed here. Moving to the container management, so here what we expect is that you have an API by based management of applications composed of containers. We expect here that you have uh, some kind of orchestration of the containers and we have several systems here. Main one would be Kubernetes, but Docker Swarm or Mesos should be equivalent. And the idea is that this system is able to manage resources on an infrastructure as a service to execute your container application as you specified. Um, in the interoperability, there are several implementation of this kind of features. Uh, all of them are non-compatible. Uh, so there are no clear guidelines of, of what's the right API to use here. One thing is clear is that Kubernetes is becoming the de facto standard. So that's kind of the, the thing that everyone is, is, is implementing. So it, it, it's useful to have into, into, consider, into consideration. Just a few more comments in this category to the services should support the OCI image uh, and runtime specs. That's the open container initiative that has a specification of the images and how to run the containers. Should support the have AI as, as before. And if the service can manage the underlying infrastructure as a service, should support the APIs uh, of that uh, layer, mainly that's OpenStack. Going to the last one, uh, the cloud infrastructure service orchestration. In this case, what we have is a system that is able to manage infrastructure service resources as code. So you have an infrastructure description, pass it to the orchestrator, and this uh, tool will manage the resources on the, on the different cloud providers. Very quickly on the interoperability, I changed a bit the format. Here we don't have any common APIs available. It's sim uh, similar to the container uh, case. There are several systems. There are no clear winner here. Uh, but for the infrastructure description, there is a clear standard, which is the Tosca. Of course, we, we 
would like to have everyone uh, comply with the EOS have AI and, and for the API to support that lower layer, OpenStack is the recommended, but others are, are pretty much welcome. So now I pass the the um, the lead to, to Marika. Uh, Marika, I think I can I can keep sharing if you don't mind and you just tell me to, to go on. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. The floor is yours. Okay, so uh, the uh, pass orchestration layer is an abstraction layer at uh, a, a higher level, as we um, all already anticipated, uh, on top of which we can build uh, user interfaces that are uh, provider agnostic, uh, user interfaces and other um, client interfaces that are provider agnostic. The pass orchestration is in fact able to abstract the Yes, uh, environments and the, the underlying yes resources, leveraging the automatic discovery of cloud compute storage providers' uh, uh, capabilities and service availability. So it uh, enables uh, the seamless as access to different uh, computing environments, uh, uh, both private clouds uh, like OpenStack, Open Nebula, etc., and public clouds like uh, um, Amazon, Azure, Google and also uh, HP, HPC sites. So it uh, features uh, advanced scheduling uh, capabilities. Uh, I mean, data aware scheduling, uh, taking into account uh, the data location when uh, dispatching the deployment requests or uh, special hardware requirements like GPU, F FPGA, InfiniBand and so on. And it, was, it also provides uh, some advanced uh, um, mechanism for uh, addressing the deployment failures, uh, scheduling the deployment to another site. Uh, it also supports a complex workflow involving uh, data orchestration and movement, uh, providing uh, policy-driven data management uh, or handling uh, quality of service for data replicas and so on. And it allows also uh, to manage the provisioning, configuration, and scaling of the cloud resources, uh, supporting uh, hybrid uh, deployments and uh, network orchestration in order to, um, to allow the seamless uh, connection between different uh, distri uh, geographically distributed uh, sites, uh, creating, uh, for example, overlay networks. And finally, it provides also on-demand application deployment, uh, so allowing the user to start long-running services in Docker containers or running uh, processing jobs, both on uh, um, uh, container orchestrators or on HPC sites. Uh, so we can pass, move to the next slide where we uh, sketch the um, uh, envisage the um, reference architecture of this uh, uh, technical uh, specification. Um, we, um, uh, we, we envisage the, um, an architecture that is basically uh, com composed of different plugins. We have some core components that are the API server uh, that should uh, manage the um, input request, uh, a workflow engine that should manage uh, the complex uh, deployment workflow, and the message bus uh, to integrate uh, the different uh, plugins and the interaction with the different uh, uh, components of this architecture. Concerning the plugins that are uh, the most important part as they uh, provide the uh, integration with uh, the different YAS environments, uh, we um, in, the, in, in this reference architecture, we have reported uh, four different plugins. Uh, the uh, plugins for uh, connecting to the cloud infrastructures, uh, cloud management frameworks, uh, using uh, the cl cloud native interfaces, uh, like those for uh, OpenStack, Open Nebula, and the public clouds. Uh, the container orchestration interfaces uh, so that the uh, pass layer can provide an, an abstraction layer on top of uh, the orchestrator container or orchestrators that uh, can all presented before, for example, uh, Kubernetes, uh, Mesos, uh, and so on. 
and uh, we have uh, the HPC uh, connectors uh, for uh, integrating uh, HPC environments. And here we have, for example, uh, uh, mentioned uh, the QCG APIs and the SLARM APIs. And, and uh, finally, we have uh, the storage services uh, uh, plugins, uh, the data management services and the data orchestration services, uh, and we have put some uh, reference uh, components, uh, for example, OneData, Dynafed and Dcash for the data management services, and uh, Rusio and FTS that are uh, at a higher level um, uh, because they provide uh, orchestration, data orchestration functionalities. And uh, Okay, of course, uh, the uh, PASS uh, solutions have also to um, integrate with some federation services uh, that are uh, um, highlighted at the, um, the left, uh, on the left part of, the, of this diagram. Uh, and are basically the AI, the monitoring, the information system, and the marketplace. Since, uh, uh, okay, of course, the AI, um, uh, provides uh, the authorization and authentication um, part for uh, the whole stack and uh, the monitoring and info system and marketplace can provide uh, useful, useful information for the pass uh, uh, components uh, in order to um, implement uh, the um, scheduling uh, and federation uh, capabilities that are exposed by this uh, technical specification. So moving uh, to the next slide, uh, concerning uh, the standards, uh, uh, we have uh, identified uh, three main standards uh, and uh, APIs, the uh, TOSCA, uh, Topology and Orchestration Specification for Cloud Applications uh, that uh, defines uh, the interoperable description of services and applications hosted in, in the cloud and elsewhere. And we are using this also to describe uh, uh, jobs and uh, um, Docker containers running uh, on, on top of uh, uh, orchestrators uh, uh, like Mesos and uh, Kubernetes. So Tosca can be easily extended and can be um, a, a point of strength for the interoper interoperability. Um, OAuth 2.0 for the authentication authorization framework and REST for all the, uh, the for implementing the, the APIs. Uh, currently, there is not an official standard for the pass orchestra orchestrations APIs, and for this, we are proposing as a reference API the one implemented in the Indigo pass orchestrator. And in this slide, you can find the link uh, to the documentation of these uh, REST APIs uh, that basically provides uh, the, um, the, 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 fun the, uh, the functions and the methods for uh, managing uh, Tosca deployments. So how to list, uh, deploy user deployments, how to create, to update a deployment, um, as an example of, of solution, so we are uh, um, the uh, pass orchestrator from the Lego Data Cloud uh, project, and both of them. Information. This was the last slide. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you both Inol and, uh, and Marika. Uh, there are quite a few uh, questions into the chat. I'm trying to summarize. There were one uh, about Kubernetes, but uh, Inol uh, already answered during uh, the presentation, so that's fine. Uh, together with uh, an answer, an, uh, a question related to the production level of this uh, uh, pass uh, already. And this is indeed uh, already production level, as Mario mentioned. Um, 
there is a question from Pavel uh, again, uh, which is the um, uh, integration with the marketplace. Uh, you are mentioning uh, integration with the marketplace, so if you can a bit provide a bit more details on this. Yes, Mike, I guess. Uh, yes, the idea is that uh, uh, the, uh, the, the orchestration, the pass orchestration uh, can leverage some information coming from uh, the marketplace, for example, if uh, the, the orders uh, and the, the SLA, the service level agreements uh, among the users and uh, uh, the, the sites are exposed through the, this, uh, uh, some APIs of the marketplace, this information can be used by the uh, orchestration tool in order to, um, to schedule uh, the, the user request uh, to, the, to the right sites. Um, this is something that uh, is under uh, discussion uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the EOSCAB project mm -hmm. and uh, we hope uh, to, uh, to come soon to uh, some, some conclusion. Okay, so this is uh, still work, uh, um, work in progress. Uh, about uh, HT, HTC uh, integration, how this uh, solution you showed fits with the DRAC? I guess that we have some uh, uh, integration with the HTC HPC cluster. The, this uh, work is carried out in the DEEP project. Yes. But uh, is still, uh, yeah, please. Yeah, we have uh, a proof of concept uh, inside the, uh, the bus orchestrator uh, that has been implemented in the framework of the uh, hybrid data cloud project. Um, we, we managed uh, to use uh, the same uh, cloud interfaces, the same pass uh, uh, interfaces. Uh, uh, to send an uh, uh, HPC job to an HPC, 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 HPC sorry, site uh, using uh, the uh, sort of uh, gateway um, implementing uh, uh, so that uh, uh, this is a sort of uh, word and uh, uh, the batch last at the HPC site in a not uh, um, direct okay I guess uh, Mike is a bit uh, broken in audio but anyway so this is uh, a I would say a different solution that is somehow providing a similar fun functionality as a direct case, but uh, on the other level, I mean, much more devoted for the um, Docker's deployment and uh, cloud-like uh, interaction with HPC. Um, okay. Um, there is a question about the data integration. Uh, how this fits, I mean, the, the pass orchestrator, how this fits, or I would say could fit in the future with iRODS. I don't know if Mike is still online, but anyway, uh, the, the general approach is uh, plugin oriented. So we already have some plugins for, uh, in this orchestrator uh, that uh, support some solutions, uh, one data, Dynaf and others. Uh, so basically uh, having uh, the development for integrating a new plugin for iRODS uh, could be indeed um, fill the gap. So that, that's yeah. a good point as soon as we as there is use cases. For it. Um, so yeah, sorry, I, that I, I'm, I'm, I'm online. I, 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 did, I, I didn't get the, the, the question because of my, my connection today is uh, unstable unfortunately but the idea is that uh, i mean we have uh, a, uh, an open uh, architecture uh, that can be easily expanded uh, um, through plugins um, as soon as, as, soon as uh, we uh, have um, a rest uh, apis uh, uh, specification uh, that can be uh, easily integrated uh, with uh, uh, the orchestration layer 
Just a comment from, from my side. Uh, IWIT is very technology, technology specific. So you can mitigate this via plugins to develop a specific interface. But uh, from an architecture point of view, we have to come to the standards to, to see what is best supported via the, the, the open standards uh, for one way or the other. So I would focus more on the standards as the technology specific interfaces. Okay, that's a good comment. Uh, um, always related to the standard, indeed, there is a comment. Uh, I guess it's time for the, I mean, uh, interface on top of the orchestrator about uh, the possibility to um, investigate on Hydra CG as a, a machine discoverable standard for doing this. Obviously, thanks for all those feedbacks. This could be part of uh, yeah, the work that we have to, to carry out in the future. That's exactly the, the reason why we are showing this to the public in order to gather comments and feedback and try to improve the um, I mean, standard approach we are following and uh, compatibility with the um, other services. Yeah, sure. And uh, for this, maybe uh, just it would be useful uh, to collect uh, these uh, yep. uh, these comments. Some some. I will try to do this for all the session. It's quite hard because fortunately there is a lot of comments, so that, that's a good point. But obviously, make my life a bit harder. But I like it. Okay. Uh, so um, there is a question about Kubernetes. Uh, it's too low in the stack. Uh, however, to it makes more sense that providers are Kubernetes on bare metal and Kubernetes as the orchestrator. So why not make part of the orchestrator layer as well through? Okay, uh, this is very technical question. Um, in principle, we do this for Mesos already. Uh, we are able to leverage on what's already there and uh, just deploy the, the dockers on top of uh, those already available um, dockers orchestrator. But uh, obviously, yeah, that's a good point. And uh, exactly, this is somehow already covered in some other cases. Yeah, because the idea is that the, uh, the user should submit uh, to the orchestration level, uh, to the, the orchestration layer, uh, a request for uh, deploying uh, a Docker container, and then uh, uh, the, the orchestrator should uh, um, select the best uh, orchestrator, Docker orchestrator, um, at the, the, uh, the lower level. Uh, that can be a Kubernetes cluster or a Mesos cluster or something else. So uh, the, the user should, shouldn't uh, take care of uh, the um, underlying technology uh, it should simply um, describe his uh, request in a Tosca template, so in a uh, standard way, and uh, the uh, pass orchestration layer should take care of uh, the underlying uh, uh, technology, uh, translating uh, the Tosca request into the specific uh, um, uh, JSON or uh, request, specific request for the underlying uh, uh, container orchestrator that can be uh, Kubernetes or, or Mesos. Okay, we have to go very fast here because obviously there is uh, also other presentation. So I try to recap very quickly other comments. Uh, this is not only reference architecture, a comments from Mark. This is indeed a uh, production already uh, the implementation it's uh, the central one, but obviously could be dedicated for specific, um, I mean, organization or community or at a regional level or as the, I mean, the deployment model is very up to the users. This is uh, not a central service somewhere, but obviously this could be for research infrastructure or whatever. So the deployment model is quite flexible. I agree with the comments related to iRoads. This is a technology, it's not a standard. Uh, iRoads is very used, uh, widely used technology, I would say, somewhere, but it's uh, technology specific as all the other technologies. So that's a good point to add it also, but it's uh, like the other technology. Okay. Um, 
So the next, I would uh, very quickly go to the next point in the agenda, uh, that is uh, HTC and HPC by Ignacio Banker. Ignacio, I guess that you are uh, nine. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Okay, perfect. So, so my screen. Sorry, that because I have to give permission to Zoom. I didn't realize this before. Sorry, now I'm back, so I had to restart. So I think and now I will be able to do it. So one second, sorry for that. Um, uh, it seems that I am not able to share the screen. It says that, that the host enabled this feature for uh, me. Yes, Andrea, if you can uh, re-add the natural uh, cost. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry for that, but I didn't realize that in this instance or in this version, I couldn't do it. Uh, yes, now I'm, I can. Right. I hope that you can see perfect. my screen yeah, yeah, perfect. So for this, perfect. this delay. So basically what I would like to comment here very briefly is uh, the development that we have done or the work that we have done in the context of the high throughput computing and high performance computing technical committee. So first, um, let me focus first of, the, of what I want to, to present. So first, how do we get this requirement? What were our sources? And what are the results that we have done so far, which basically is, um, three technical specification documents uh, addressing two main problems, the multi-tenant job submissions, including the containerized workloads and the HTC, HPC uh, clusters. So first, uh, the information, I mean, the specifications have been done according to the feedback that we have received from our user communities. So we started having some discussions with them, exchanging uh, documents, and we asked them uh, to explicitly uh, provide a set of requirements. So we clearly identified that there are age communities expressing the needs of high throughput computing to explicitly mention HPC, although I, we believe, I mean, from the information we can uh, deduct that there are other HPC requirements within the HTC. Basically, we um, group the, the requirements provided by the, by the community and target at HTC, HPC, as the need for the deployment of the specific classes for data analytics, the integration of the job submission with uh, cloud computing uh, resources and uh, HTC resources, and the use of, con I mean, and the management of workloads that are based on containers, as well as other uh, additional things like the support of Jupyter networks, reliability, and availability. So first, I would like to, uh, I mean, uh, concentrate that we will have two major, we have studied two major um, uh, macro features. One, related, dedicated to multi-tenant a platform, which is the capability of submitting HTC, HPC workloads on those uh, infrastructures. And the second is the, um, the deployment of single tenant customized uh, infrastructures for which are clusters for the um, uh, research. So in the left side, uh, our main concern was on the transparent management of the allocation of resources because we have existing resources, which are the HTC ones and new resources that are deployed on the on the flow, on, on the fly, which are uh, based on cloud computing and the management of software dependencies. Similarly, in the part of dedicated uh, on-demand clusters, we focus also on the elasticity and the customization, including the support to specific hardware. So then I will try to um, 
uh, focus a bit on the specifications that we have provided, uh, we have prepared. So with respect to the multi-tenant job submissions, so the, the effort has been on the minimization of this um, transition from the execution of the local workloads, local computers to the um, uh, distributed environments. And then there we identified needs at two levels. So at the level of the service that implement this part on research matchmaking, application delivery management and reproducibility, and also with respect to the whole ecosystem in a, in a coherent integration on the authentication and the data access. And then we explain this in two technical specification documents that are available there. And I will be, we will be very grateful if you can have uh, criticize and, and, uh, and read. So very briefly, uh, with respect to uh, specifications and standards, so for this kind of services, we identified four blocks. Those that are related, related to um, the submissions of job in existing um, typical high throughput computing uh, services, like those that are related with computing elements or those that are related with a batch system that basically deal with the specification and management of jobs. Others that are related and has been also um, explained uh, before by Enola and Marika related to the authentication and related to the cloud services and also for the containers in which we have clearly two, uh, two main points, which is the Docker-like and ecosystem and, and variations. Uh, the other uh, infrastructure, the other component um, related to container management that deal with user level execution like singularity and the uh, specification. So very briefly, so I think that this is a very well-known uh, architecture. That they are a candidate um, a implementation for this is the EGI workload manager or Dirac, Dirac for EGI. That uh, the main point has been to uh, ensure the management of uh, cloud resources on the fly when dealing with this um, the, this heterogeneous uh, uh, backends, right? In this point, what is uh, interesting also to consider, and this is something that is uh, quite demanded by the, by the users, is the management of containers in this workload, which poses to a couple of important uh, points, which is uh, the management of of this kind of, of workloads in the existing um, uh, backends uh, for processing, which requires some changes, and also uh, the, the, the need of, of managing the creation of, of customized images, as I will, I will later display. So very briefly, um, the highlights and the integration that we depict in these technical specifications for this case, uh, refer to these four points uh, re related to the, um, to the authentication authorization, basically to have a coherent uh, authentication, authentication mechanisms and dealing with the long-term living jobs that require sometimes the um, renewal of credentials. So with the information systems for not only discovering the HCC endpoint, but also for discovering this health, I mean, for having information about the health and the status of the of the capacity, managing the different types of job scheduling. So the native, let's say, uh, batch queue systems that are deployed on the flight on the container that could deploy on the flight on the on the cloud services, and also the management of a computing element like uh, endpoints uh, that are viable and data management that requires a lot of uh, important. Uh, uh, capabilities on specifying, specifying the, the data distribution, uh, which is a little more interesting in this, uh, uh, or a little more novel in this part, is the how the, the consideration of the container services because it poses a special or a, a higher, um, um, I mean, let's say complexity in the case of existing infrastructures because it requires either that we um, uh, that that the the support of the containers that. Is, is granted by the user administration, but, but typically this is limited to those technologies that are that enable uh, running containers on the user space due to the, the complexity of multi-tenancy and also the, the use of pre escalated privilege, the risk of escalated privilege that other containers, Docker containers have. And also, which is another important point in the, in the, in the, in, I would say in the technology selected by the project is the use of container management system like Udocker that permits the user to specify to use containers even if the, um, uh, the support is not given by the provider. Uh, this also poses the complexity of managing container images 
that are tailored by the for the backends because we have that we know that there are some limitations in the use of advanced hardware devices like networking or accelerators uh, and potentially we identify the 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 interest of having our mechanisms to automatically create those containers based on specifications to ensure that we get the most appropriate uh, I mean base images for that and also to to, to extend the job uh, submission system to deal with these job types. So very uh, briefly, the second uh, part that I think also addresses uh, some of the comments that we have seen in the previous presentation is to have the capability of deploying HTC or HPC clusters on demand. So it's similar as the Amazon Elastic or AKS, right? Um, but uh, extended not only to Kubernetes, but also to different load balances. Yes, uh, this complement the conference. Okay, presentation. So, sorry, I think that someone forgot to move. Uh, so this complement the previous use cases and environment. In this case, is isolated and single tenant. So, and uh, in this case, we we uh, the important thing is that it could be ideally self-managed in terms of adjusting the capacity to the actual workload and tailored to again to the to the backends. So again, we have one specific uh, technical document in the same folder that we'll be very happy that you have a look. Very briefly, uh, we add uh, one specification that has been already mentioned by, by Marika and, and, and all related to the description of the clusters using the OASIS Tosca to describe the topology of the cluster and the area associated software dependencies. And uh, this is the very high level, um, um, I mean, architecture view in which you clearly identify these two roles, the, the, the person that deploys the cluster, the person who could be the same, that uses the cluster through the, uh, back, through the um, uh, job management system. In this case, it's important to note that there, if uh, elasticity is provided, there should be some uh, logic and some um, capability of acting on behalf of the user for extending and, and shrinking the cluster inside the container. Um, final uh, thing is integration highlights on this point. So we have one candidate implementation already on the EGI applications on demand, which is the EC3 portal that they manages this thing that could be extended and also uh, one of uh, the, uh, uh, an extension on the, that has been performed uh, that is called ECAS. So in this case, we need to integrate with the AAI for the, uh, to, to have a not only a coherent management of the, of the credential, but also, which is very important, to provide the capability of um, shrinking and uh, enlarging the clusters on behalf of the user uh, during the, uh, I mean, the long living time of the clusters. Inter interaction with information system is, is especially critical because in this case, cluster, I mean, cloud providers may not have all the, the, the base images that, they, that could be needed or could have different um, uh, flavors, and that is something that should be dynamically retrieved from the information system to avoid um, failures, and of course the integration with the compute cloud services. Just to end, I uh, will say that I will we will be very happy to get more feedback from the documents, uh, either through Jira or through the Confluence, if you are have capabilities of of uh, accessing it or directly emailing me. And that's all from my side. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Ignacio. I see a lot of activity in the in the chat, but uh, if I don't see that there are no specific questions to uh, this topic at the very moment, so I will ask uh, everyone if there is any specific question to uh, Ignacio that could be done live. I guess. No, and I don't see neither in slide or uh, question in this case. So everything is clear and already maybe acquired. So um, next, thank you uh, again, Yatsu. Uh, next uh, in the list uh, is um, Mark and uh, Eric. Uh, and Lucas will be the last one, as anticipated at the beginning. So. Um, who will start? Uh, I will start. Um, Thank I you, will Mark. Start with to see where I can share my screen. I think it should be this one.
Okay, perfect. We can hear you perfectly and uh, see the slides. So that's perfect. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Done. Fine. Thank you. Full screen mode. So everyone can see my slides? Yeah, uh, it's okay. still uh, visible and that's fine. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I uh, share this uh, this this uh, section with uh, Heinrich, uh, and within the section uh, we present uh, 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 definitions about building blocks, uh, which is uh, talk about a uh, digital repository and about uh, metadata metadata aggregation. Uh, so I will start with the digital repository. Um, the 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 way of, of defining a reference architecture is to define a building block and to describe a building block and which type of functionalities are provided by such a building block and uh, which APIs or standards should be used. Uh, within a digital repository, uh, many of uh, many components, many functionality comes comes together. But if you define uh, a digital repository, uh, a digital repository is an infrastructure component that is able to store, manage, and curate. Uh, digital objects and return their bit streams when a request is being issued. And this definition is also based on information which is provided by the, the RDA uh, Data Foundation and Technology uh, Working Group. So this is more in a broader discussed definition of what the digital repository is. And if you look at uh, the other definitions of how to handle uh, the, the data, um, then it is also coming from this uh, uh, definition. Um, because it is creating digital objects, a digital object is represented by a bitstream, it is referenced, referenced and identified by a position identifier and has properties that are described by metadata. Digital objects can also be aggregated to digital collections, and the digital collection is in principle a complex digital object, which again is identified by a PD and described by metadata. And if you define metadata, metadata contains descriptive, contextual, and provenance assertions about properties of a digital object or and or a digital collection. And below you can find the reference information uh, which has been developed within uh, the RDA about these uh, terminologies. But if you put this in, an, in a diagram, then you have many different uh, components which are uh, uh, connected or functionalities provided by a digital repository. So this diagram provides a high level architecture. Uh, a tooth uh, digital repository provides an interface, but provides an interface for, for humans, but also for, for machines, so that you can access uh, uh, data also through APIs, instead of just a web, uh, uh, web interface. Um, then, uh, is also about that a digital uh, object you should be able to upload and download uh, data. You should provide uh, uh, metadata descriptions. Uh, position identifier should be uh, uh, registered for uh, uh, the digital objects, for the day, uh, for the collections. Uh, you can have uh, PEDs for the landing page, but also for the individual objects which are being uploaded. Of course, you need an AI uh, interface because uh, uh, users should be able to upload uh, uh, data. Uh, if you have open access, uh, data can be downloaded without logins, but uh, not all, always all data is open access. Therefore, also people should be able to log in into the system to get access to the data when it is needed. Um, in, in general, uh, data is, uh, uh, is is stored metadata, but also metadata within digital repository is made uh, uh, available to other kinds of search engines. Um, and therefore, uh, digital repository frequently provides an interface where uh, uh, metadata aggregators, search engines can collect the metadata from uh, a digital repository to harvest them and to provide other interfaces. Um, uh, and this is it will be described by uh, uh, Henry. Uh, but if you look at a digital repository itself, mostly it provides also a research interface, 
so that you can find information within the data repository, uh, but also all the types of uh, functionality is, uh, uh, is related to a data repository, which is about, okay, how do you describe uh, data? What kind of metadata is to be used? Uh, frequently, this is very community specific, should be flexible, but then uh, how is metadata then being described when it is being harvested? So there are different aspects of doing this. Uh, you have to take think about a licensing. Uh, what kind of licensing should you attach to, to data? Uh, it strongly depends on what kind of data, but also what kind of access is being provided uh, to your data. And that is strongly uh, uh, defined by what kind of license is to be used for, uh, for the, da the data. And you can uh, do this differently for the metadata or for the data itself. And in general, uh, for digital repositories, data should be also curated. And this is, is not always a technical issue, but it is more processed. How do you uh, manage the ingest of the data, but also how do you curate data over longer term of, of time? What are the steps to be done? And uh, depending on the level of curation, you can also think about a certification of the service. And also there, there are multiple levels of uh, uh, certifications for uh, uh, certifying your data repository uh, to provide trust. Um, if you look at this, this is then the whole list of, 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 of features. I noticed that I'm also not yet mentioned something about uh, uh, metrics. And I think that is also important uh, for a digital repository that uh, metrics are being collected. Uh, metrics about not uh, the uses of, uh, of, of the resources being provided, but mostly about uh, how is the data being uh, used or downloaded or viewed, uh, 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 which is presented within the data repository. If you go to, 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 to standards, um, there are a large number of standards. And I think that is one of the process which we have to go through is to see what are the best standards uh, to, to be used. Uh, and there are some standards which are more uh, common as, as, uh, as less uh, and less common. Uh, if you look at some, for example, if you look at the upload and the download, there are uh, standards which are uh, more common. For example, the SWOT standard is very common, is uh, supported by different technologies. DOIP is uh, an upcoming standard uh, which is, uh, is made available, but is not yet very, uh, very much supported within technologies, but there are different developments. Um, but most of the standards which is currently provided to, to interact with uh, 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 digital repositories are very uh, technology uh, specific. And then it depends on which technology you choose, which APIs are being provided by this technology. For the metadata uh, descriptions, uh, this is very uh, defined by the community. So mostly in, in the digital repositories, there's a flexible way of defining metadata. Uh, as the discussions about what are the minimum metadata uh, uh, templates to be provided. And that is more about metadata to make data harvestable by uh, all our search engines, for example, uh, in OpenAir, UDAP. Uh, or maybe uh, through Google. And it is about adapting those, those standards, but give also the flexibility so that communities can define their own extensions to the metadata. Uh, next to the harvesting, uh, in defining what is the minimum information you should make available uh, through the harvesting, they also have different protocols for, for harvesting. OEA PMH is one uh, common protocol uh, for, for, for harvesting, which is widely used, uh, but is also sometimes considered as an, as an old protocol. Uh, Resource Sync is a newly developed uh, uh, protocol, which has been standardized uh, a number of years ago, but you have also community specific uh, 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 protocols as OGSC, uh, which is coming from the geospatial uh, uh, community. Uh, persistent identifiers. Um, 
there are many different different persistent identifiers, and also different persistent identifiers can be used for different types of information. Uh, you can have uh, uh, DOIs for referring to the landing page or for the data collection. You can have uh, handle PDs for referencing to uh, individual individual objects, but also you can have uh, ORCID IDs for uh, uh, individuals. Uh, but there are many different uh, 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 PD systems available. But uh, because a digital repository is depending on using uh, this identifiers, it is more depending on the guidelines for a set by the precision identifier uh, building block to adapt to those guidelines instead of defining the guideline for precision identifiers within this uh, uh, description. Uh, licensing. Uh, there are different licensing models, uh, and um, the Creative Commons is one is uh, one common license which is frequently used also for referencing to publications, but also for for data. Uh, and you have many, for example, if you uh, work with uh, so, uh, with software, then you have many open source uh, code licenses. And it depends on which kind of data, but it will help to lead uh, users of a digital repository to select the best license for for the data. So some flexibility would be uh, would be advised. And there are models uh, for for doing this. Uh, for the AI, uh, it is more defined by uh, the AI building block. At the moment, there's a, a big endeavor to define the EOSC AI. And if you want to have a digital repository, then it is uh, looking at uh, the EOSC AI, what are the standards to be used to integrate your service within the EOSC AI, for example, to allow federated uh, authentication uh, on, on your system. Uh, for trust certification, uh, there are at the moment three major uh, uh, certification schemes, which also are differentiating in, 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 in level of, of heaviness to go through the process. Uh, the core trust seal is a very common uh, uh, certification scheme, uh, which is uh, currently widely adopted, but it is also seen as the, the lowest entry level of uh, uh, providing a trust seal, uh, while the other two schemas are more stronger in the requirements for uh, uh, getting certified. Uh, for the metrics, at the moment there is a lot of discussion about what kind of metrics should be collected from digital repositories. Uh, also within the IDA, uh, there's a lot of discussion on this. Uh, but we sh if you develop a digital repository or you use uh, technologies for setting up a digital repository, it is about that those metrics should be implemented following the guidelines provided by, for example, the Open Science Framework. Because in this way, you know that you collect uh, the right information to show uh, usage of, of uh, data stored within a digital repository. Um, but uh, going to the, to the process to, to look at this, uh, I had contact with, uh, with different people and also from different information. But there were also, from this, I saw that there are already many different initiatives looking at defining uh, what would be uh, a digital repository. How do you describe this? What would be the functionality of a digital repository? Uh, one is by uh, uh, CORE. Uh, next, uh, has defined and published a report on the next generation uh, repository. I have looked at this documentation. It is describing very much similar uh, capabilities of the digital repository, even some more advanced uh, capabilities. But it does not define at the moment uh, uh, the, the standards, the APIs to use to integrate or to set up a digital repository. So, but I think uh, uh, from from the perspective of defining an architecture, uh, you have to also relate to those type of communities which have been working also in the same area to define okay, what would be a digital repository? How do you describe this? What would be the functionality and the capabilities to provide it? Another uh, group which have done uh, very similar things is from the, the Decatur group, which is coming from the RDA, uh, defined as a group of European data experts. And also there, there has been a discussion about uh, what is a digital repository and how do you describe this? What would be the functionalities to provide it? 
And I think if we define an architecture uh, for data repositories, we have to uh, discuss and to work also with those, uh, those groups to bring them in or collaborate with them to, to define what will be in data repository, what is the architecture and how the capabilities or standards to be used. Um, then I will go to uh, Heinrich. Hello, can you hear me well? Yes, okay, can you hear you? Yes, great. Uh, so I'm Heinrich from uh, German Climate Computing Center in Hamburg, and I will present here the area of metadata management and data discovery. And so we identified here within this area of building block three macro functionalities. So this is uh, data discovery and access. So this is addressed, so this is the main aim, of course. Uh, so this is addressed to the end users and, and, and enable researchers to search for uh, uh, data resources and then that they, then, they, then they can access them and use them. So the means of, or to, to achieve this, uh, of course, you need uh, you have to need some procedure to aggregate metadata. So this is the metadata cataloging and indexing. I name it here. So this is addressed to the data providers or to the metadata providers. It's mostly both in this with the same. Uh, and uh, so to make possible that uh, data providers can publish metadata in a central metadata catalog. And so additionally, uh, so it's, it's good to have something as a annotation service. So this is the possibility again for end users to annotate data sets. So that means that you can link uh, uh, data sets to semantic text or to concepts like the ontologies or to add a comment or uh, so to to make this so this uh, as well uh, supports interoperability that you can exchange information and uh, things with your colleagues and other researchers and as well here is the uh, address to the data providers or to ontology providers so that they publish their ontologies and then can link to them okay for the detailed technical specification you can find them here on this link so uh, okay please next slide mark Okay, here is the high level architecture. So it's a little bit complex because uh, here are these three macro functionality shown, macro functionalities shown. So you have in the center here in the bottom right is the metadata catalog. So the uh, set, the metadata are harvested through the metadata cataloging process uh, by from the metadata or the data repositories so from the communities and here are different services and protocols used so the standard as OIPMH is here preferred so we want the central service in EOC hub is, which uh, is doing this is uh, you, you let me to find but uh, so I read already the, the comments in the chat or the questions yes we at the, the approach at least by you let me to find and by most generic uh, metadata uh, services is uh, Yes, we, we, we support in principle any protocol and, and we, we in principle we harvest any kind of specific metadata schema and then the hard work is the, is the meta, -mapping, meta mapping then and the metadata duration and finally then to index 
the, the, uh, the metadata records in the search portal. And of course, then you have to map them on, on the unified uh, uh, metadata schema to the target metadata schema. So, but as far as possible, we try to use, uh, of course, uh, uh, along the FAIR principles, control for capillaries. For example, again, for you that need to find, uh, so as an interdisciplinary uh, 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 metadata service and catalog, we have uh, a categorization for disciplines for research disciplines and there are specific uh, initiatives that we improve this controlled by capillaries for research disciplines this is very important okay again to the main goal to the data discovery and access of course uh, this should be again along the fair principles possible to accessible by human beings and but as well by machine uh, by machines so as well we uh, we should uh, provide the search graphical user interface but as well the possibility to access uh, the search and access data via a command line interface okay there are uh, different standards and tools uh, for data search, uh, so different search APA is Elasticsearch, and of course, uh, Pseudo standard for indexing is Lusa, uh, Lucene Solar. Uh, and as well, there are uh, uh, search repositories or portals, they are based on more linked on data, so SPARQL plays an uh, important role. And additionally, you can have an implementation service. So this is in the left top here. Uh, so that means a set that you can link metadata sets to, uh, to concepts as ontologies. So this is based as well on linked open data text. So often the the records are here, the annotation records are formatted or realized as JSON, LDs, or in turtle, or anything else. And it's uh, the model is used here, is used here, the W3C annotation model. Okay, next slide, please. Yes, here is I uh, listed uh, uh, some standards, example of standards. So uh, for data discovery, as already already stressed by Mark, uh, meta good metadata description is is uh, important. So and these are based on standardized metadata schemas and a set uh, on. Uh, control vocabularies. Yes, and the big challenge is in this business that, of course, the controlled vocabularies are often specific and uh, domain specific and community specific, and uh, but we want to support the specific things and then the, 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 the work is and the challenge is to map them on a common basis so that you can then provide all these facets and uh, fields and so on in the central uh, search portal. So as search APIs, as said, there are a lot of standards and tools and software. So there's Elasticsearch, likely of, uh, of um, a lot of you know them. CCAN is a platform a search a portal, is a platform software we use in the view that we do find, for example. Uh, Lucene Solar is used mostly for indexing metadata, and there are a lot of other of search APIs. So, very important. Uh, 
guidelines here and for the address to the researchers. So, of course, you need a good and simple to understand search guides for the discovery portals and for the search portals. So, and if for metadata catalog, as already addressed and a little bit discussed in the chat, as I can see, uh, there are a lot of uh, standards and protocols. The old one mostly used as well is still in EU that we define this as IPMH because it's stable and it's uh, widely used. And that's right, Resource Sync is the modern version or the successor. And we, uh, I think the EU that we will be defined is, is on the to do list that we uh, as well support uh, harvesting via resource sync. But we as well uh, support other protocols uh, like or APIs, like some, some uh, data providers have specific JSON APIs. So then we can have harvest from. Uh, catalog geo, geo uh, uh, networks via OGC or C CWS and uh, yes and try it. so this is more in progress that we via SparkQL as well can uh, harvest and collect metadata from triple store repositories for example. Okay, and as said, the, the heart and the, the, the work and is to, to the meta mapping and the meta exploration. So really to map the community specific records and schemas to the central B2, uh, so in B2 find to the B2 find uh, metadata schema. This is based on uh, the data side. So there are a lot of others, and of course here then the chat was uh, discussing about DCAT or question, uh, and there are a lot of uh, uh, so that, you know Dublin Core, it's a quite old format, and of course schema.org already mentioned by Mark. Uh, so and as uh, indexing, uh, then finally the metadata records in the portal, the search portal, mostly solar indexing is used, but as well other software like Zcan or uh, we, we started as well as Google does already a lot uh, to collect metadata from schema.org. So schema.org is, I would say, both uh, metadata schema and uh, yes, a lot of buyer portals use this technology. It's very interesting. So, and here for the to addressing the data providers, especially the interoperability guidelines, is very important. Where this really described what I said in the last minute. So, which protocols should be used, which standards, and what the different services. Uh, are supporting. So, and in bold, I list here some examples of services, discovery and metadata services. So, this in the uh, scope of EOC hub, I mentioned here, of course, especially you that need to find, which is, is in, within the scope of EOC, EOC hub, the central indexer and metadata service. And but uh, we have a strong collaboration with Open Air. So for sure, I think you know Open Air. Open Air is more care about uh, open data. But uh, for example, as well, this is a work in progress. Open Air as well harvests now metadata from the other people to find to apply their uh, their services to improve the quality of the metadata and okay and we work together with as well this data side and use at the moment in you that to find we use their uh, metadata schema uh, 
And as well, we work together with data side uh, in the direction with uh, digital object identifiers. And as from one sentence, what Mark stressed in his uh, presentation of data repositories, where the P, the concept of PIDs, persistent identity is very important. Here, the PIDs are very central that they are used to, of course, to get linked to the uh, data resources. And finally, the annotation service, as said, uh, this is based on the W3C web annotation data model. And here, are, uh, as format or realizations are often uh, JSON LDs linked to the data in the J uh, JSONs or turtle and other formats. I'm not an expert here. So this is done by a other colleague here, uh, we, Jan Lefranc, who is the service provider of the service EU that we can note. And as well, again, always in this context, guidelines, good interoperability guidelines are very important to show the, to the end users and as well to the providers, in this case for the providers of ontologies how to use uh, standards in which uh, yes uh, I, sorry i have to step in we we need to close very quickly because there is still okay, a uh, lucas sorry. presentation so yeah i close with the last slide can you just switch and then uh, mark yes again i go not in the detail here again there are several initiatives they so also use in the rda there are a lot of uh, yes metadata uh working groups and i think and i will mention the go fair discovery implementation network okay thanks sorry for taking too long <laughs> Okay, thank you both uh, Enrich and Mark. Uh, I see Mark uh, basically is already answering to, to the chat to the question and also because we are very late uh, uh, with the schedule. Unfortunately, I have to go through um, uh, those questions and uh, give the floor directly to uh, Lukas that uh, will present us last part of uh, the agenda about uh, the task uh, specification. Uh, good morning. Can you hear me well? Just to clarify. Yes, yes uh, Lucas, okay, and uh, the slides I'm sharing, are well. I'm sharing the screen, and should you see my screen, uh, I will be very, very, my presentation is going to be short, so please stay tuned, and it's not going not to take very long. Uh, the talk is about the data platform for processing. So from the high level point of architecture view, we are talking about the thing which can help us to transparently or uh, efficiently manage a complex data processing in distributed environment. So in practice, this is this, this yellow box which we have here, which connects the processing power which we might have with the data resources. But of course, if we are talking about the EOSC and the distributed environments, uh, in practice, we need to combine a very large complex uh, ecosystem all together deliver some sort of uniform data input source into the data processing. Uh, I took a liberty and uh, from this uh, Mark and Harry slides, uh, I, I just took a picture about the data repositories. But the practice, if you are talking about the platform, processing platform, it has to be tightly connected with the existing repositories, data repositories, so, uh, which allows us to, to take the source and input of the data files and as well to place the, the results in the end somewhere. Of course, the, the maturity Mark was talking about the repositories might, might vary. It depends on the, 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 the collection which we work. Uh, it doesn't, need, doesn't mean that we have like all precise curated metadata in our environments in all the repositories. But in practice, from the high level uh, view on the, all the architecture, this is, the, this is the, the essence. Data processing platform is the thing which is a layer which combines the old ecosystem of the data and delivers the processing and, and delivers us the, and enables us to process the data in the efficient manner. 
And there are many other aspects about that. And uh, the way how we are currently achieving this, 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 this high level picture in the uh, current applications, uh, but the macro features uh, are more or less like that. So first of all, we need to have like a, a ways to integrate the existing uh, the existing repository somehow to integrate the digital repository or data repositories into the into the uh, data processing platform. And there is another problem: how to access the data processing platform from the computational infrastructure. So it means that how we are reading the data from these worker nodes through from the platform. There are different approaches. There are different approach with HTTP-based APIs or object-oriented APIs or uh, more traditional POSIX way, which is compatible with more, uh, more data uh, processing applications, uh, legacy applications. And a very important part is as well how we are managing in, in input and output data. Of course, input uh, is a part of data processing platform, but as well output, we need to do something with the, the results and the data processing platform often should as well facilitate that data process. Uh, about the data processing part as well, we are talking about the long distance data transfer problems, which uh, we need to have uh, in the end in the uh, environments uh, because the, the results are uh, not always uh, kept uh, or the inputs are can't be always in the same place. Of course, we would love to have that case that we are transferring the, the computation close to the data, uh, close to the data resource. So, so we are in similar data center, that's the optimal, but it's not always possible. Especially we are talking about the scientific repeatability, repeatability experiments, the data processing of the results coming from other results, other experiments, it's uh, usually impossible. Oh, that might be very difficult. There is a several other aspects like the quality of service expression, which people are expect, uh, based on data location, access control rights, because the, all those things are very important because they, they, it touches the data. So we need to take seriously very much the, 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 the rights and the control of security aspects. And uh, if we are talking about the processing, there's very important part about which we can't forget and we remember from the grid times, it's like a, a pain, uh, very uh, pain of the the problem. Is like how to to delegate my uh, my uh, um, identity to the processing power, uh, processing nodes, while the processing might take a long, a long, a long time. Because most of the solutions are very nicely and uh, connected to the web interfaces. But if you are going to the batch processing and long term processing data, and things which are way, uh, lasting weeks. Uh, the, the, the problems of the delegation of AI authority might be might be important, might be tricky, and this aspect has to be as well taken by the data processing platform. And uh, of course, the, there are things like obvious scalability and decentralization, because in the world where we are talking about that, um, we need to have a way of taking the heat out of the, the repositories while we are processing the, the data and the repository, the processing environments has to be independent if we go with the global scalability. Uh, so these aspects are, uh, are crucial. Uh, but last but not least, there is a, a key element that we are working with the heterogeneity of the infrastructure and the storages. Because while we are de deploying the, this processing infrastructure and the broad vision is to do that even ad hoc. So we, we meet the problems with the heterogeneity of storage technology, which is behind this, and the heterogeneity of the technology which is delivering the virtual infrastructure. If we are talking about the cloud, HPC as well is not very uniform. That all of these aspects are very, very problematic. And the expectation is like the application, this is a crucial part. Applications should be, um, they, they shouldn't be much changed in the processing if we want to make the, that thing happen. Otherwise the, the cost of the application adaptation is, is too much. Uh, it will be too much. So the, the examples of relevant solutions and standards are just gathered the key point, which I gathered the key, key elements of this, this part of the picture is like, we need to address the several protocols of the integration of data repositories. In the current deployments, we are having the web tabs and grid, the grid FTP dominant, uh, but uh, there as well uh, the POSIX, which is uh, very local to the, the, the data centers, and it, it requires some sort of, of gatewaying interfaces, which might be done by grid FTP or the other software stack solution or web tab, whatever. 
So, but this 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 kind of solution, which is this is this is key element. But the second part is how we are reading the data. And again, the application, most of the application, the scientific works prefers POSIX, but there are coming, of course, the solution for S3 web docs and, and other things. So all of those things are combined together in this environment. And we are talking about the distributed environment. We need to preserve the ability to access different protocols in the different environments by chose, chosen by the application. And uh, the key part is like how we are moving the, the data between the location and how we are managing all those things. There are a few solutions which is like uh, old fashioned are seen as FTP, typical for common in uh, HPC centers for the very small uh, data collection of the small input parts. But if you are talking about the large things, the, 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 the it's not so trivial. So we are talking about the petabyte of data and transferring them for a long time and might take so long. So we need to have like a power by the other solutions which are available on the market. Uh, and so was uh, in the talk, well, Mark was telling and Harry was telling about the metadata in terms of the data digital repositories. Um, uh, we have like uh, facing a different type of metadata uh, here. Um, problems because there are many applications requires uh, processing driven by metadata attached to the data. It means that they are scheduling and or orchestrating the part of the solution uh, or the processing based on the on the attached metadata. It's not the data to the metadata for discovery, the, the entire data collection, which was hiring uh, topics, but it's about a, a, each individual data object or file. And this is supported by several solutions at the moment, uh, by a few solutions at the moment, uh, but it's getting more and more important uh, by the, the community, especially in AI-oriented uh, applications. Uh, so, uh, the other part are obvious, but one of the things I would like to, to stand for a second about that is AI delegation in the process. I mentioned uh, this is a big pain in the in the process because when we are having like the application running our, our computational job, we need to to grant and pre present our identity in the loop to to demonstrate that we have the right to read the process that the, the respective data in so certain light way. Uh, but the process of delegation is, is a complex because most of the SSO solutions are based on the short-term data process, data delegation, and there is a lot of aspects about the trust, how much, how long we can trust with the the, 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 the certificate or the, the, the token being delegated in the long run, because otherwise we might be uh, in trouble if someone hijacked our tokens from the processing infrastructure. And of course, we are remembering the grid, uh, uh, sorry for spelling, grid, uh, grid process certificates, which are one of the, the, the most commonly used uh, solution at the moment in this area. But there are uh, as well common other aspects coming on the market, which are trying to simplify the whole process. But anyway, this process is not very uh, easy for the end users because it requires some sort of understanding how the thing works behind the scene. And this, this is crucial. And this is like a very important problem to be sorted out by the processing platform in the future. And if we are going to, to the challenges, uh, extremely going to the challenges, uh, I we find during the analysis of the problems, several aspects of the, the problem of deployments, automatic deployments and federation and security aspects in the environment. Because the broad vision is like that. We have like a data collection somewhere, several data collections, several data repositories, so digital repositories. And then we would like to do the processing on top of that ad hoc in some sort of, some clouds where we are getting current the computational power. Of course, uh, the matter of optimization of deployment or, or the matter of the, uh, um, data movements is a, is, a, is a second level problem. The first level is how to deploy the, the processing platform automatically in, uh, in the processing environment. And in that, we are talking basically something like software-defined storage, because for what we get from the virtual environment, where we can get uh, VMs and the cloud environment, we basically get usually the, just the VMs, uh, CPUs, and block devices. On top of that, we should ter ter terraform something automatically for the, the processing, part, processing infrastructure, but data processing infrastructure. But the problem is like these clouds, even though they, all of them are using open stacks, so many of them using open stacks, although of course, um, they are different. They, they deliver the problems of the, uh, 
minor things which are blocking problem network configuration, storage configuration aspects, and all these little things are making the automatic deployments uh, very, very difficult and, and challenging. And especially if you go a step further, uh, even if we overcome this terraforming problems, uh, then we go to the other aspects, like uh, if we want to make everything secure, then the problem is, is how to automatically uh, allocate the certificates, the issue the certificates, because everything should have like a SSL green certificates. Everything has to be properly, the, all the communication channels should be properly encrypted. And how to delegate the uh, connection to the IDPs, uh, how to connect the IDPs while we, the instances has to be registered in the uh, IDP system. And so these are the challenges which are uh, very difficult to be uh, overcome by most of the platforms that are dealing with the data processing and, and trying to address the, the challenge to deploy the whole uh, infrastructure uh, uh, on spot in the, some certain clouds. And uh, of course, the scaling performance as well is very important to understand because behind the scene, Sometimes it requires understanding of the actual storage in the cloud, the specific cloud resources, because sometimes the block devices are independent, or sometimes like a physical independent drives, and sometimes the block devices are virtual coming from the centralized Ceph or centralized uh, block IEO devices. So the, the problem is that as Marika and the other people during this, this talk were showing, telling about the different ways of processing the data, we have like a jobs, Mesos, Kubernetes, and then HDC, HPC, and all these things are all together, uh, bringing a lot of heterogeneity in the technology. But uh, if we are talking about the data processing platform itself, uh, it's, very, it's very good if we, combine all these things together with the, the pl platform as a service because the, the complexity of the whole thing is uh, the, the, those things are usually working well together and in practice they deliver if you want to have an ideal uh, solution for processing and data processing platforms so in sense of uh, some sort of universal one click button deployment and uh, we get the processing uh, solution it should be tightly connected with the platform as a service things orchestrating aspects as well and and so of course this is uh, for the uh, for the larger larger infrastructure larger processing data infrastructure in smaller cases there is a, there are scenarios easy for data processing platforms being deployed separately and then build on top of that uh, smaller virtual set of virtual machines which are connecting and individually processing the data amongst the, the user needs. And the, the very strong important is like uh, uh, it's like the strong integration with the data repositories because otherwise we don't have anything to process. And what is the place where we are trying to descend and results out of the, the, the processing. Of course, most of the people think, okay, we have like a storage collection. I have a home directory. I have a collection directory in my, in my data center. But in practice, if you have like a, a high level EOS uh, level overview, you need to treat all those so data sources as some sort of uh, data repository, which has all together connected and build the, the whole ecosystem. Otherwise we are having too many boundaries in the, in the, in the whole area. So that's the, that's the quick summary of where we are with the data processing uh, platforms and, and how the, the situation looks like. And I hope I wasn't talking too long and I, I'm afraid I don't have like a, all the, the nice recipe, which way to go to solve all the problems because the, pro the complexity of the situation is, uh, is like very different depending on the application type. Thank you for your time and hopefully you have some questions if you be interested in the topic, please ask. Thank you, Lukas. Thank you very much for uh, this very interesting presentation. Unfortunately, obviously, we have 10 minutes uh, after the scheduled time, so we are very, uh, I mean, late, I would say. Um, I don't see a specific question to this uh, session into the uh, chat window. Let me cross check the Slido very quickly. I, I'm just refreshing the page to be sure I get the last snapshot. Not working. <laughs> Sorry for that. Okay. 
Okay, I see no other specific question uh, from Slido. Uh, there are a few um, pull uh, fill it up, so I would ask you to fill up the pool again. Um, unfortunately, there is no room for discussion. Uh, yes, there is indeed. Uh, the, the, the thanks, uh, uh, Brother Silva, for the question. That was uh, exactly my last point in the agenda. We are collecting all together uh, all those materials you have seen uh, in this presentation uh, plus uh, other. At the moment, they are. Um, advanced draft, I would say. I mean, they are already uh, internal reviewed and uh, I mean, people are actively working on it, but it's not final, neither officially approved. Um, I've passed the link into the chat. It is a public uh, wiki page uh, from the official uh, USCAB uh, uh, wiki. Um, you have here all the um, already drafted uh, documents. There are still many others uh, under preparation that will be published in CivilLink in the next weeks. Uh, so you can look at those documents uh, again, not as final version, but as a working draft that uh, you can provide input to. Uh, please just write to the authors of uh, the documents and uh, keep me copied that I'm following uh, these uh, activities as uh, uh, involved in the TCOM. And uh, obviously we will put the same link into the official agenda uh, of this session so that also afterwards you can reach the, the page in order to get informed about uh, those uh, documents. Unfortunately, I have to close here. Uh, um, thank you all for joining and thank you all for the interesting feedback and uh, participation. For any kind of further question or comments, please write uh, directly an email to me or to the um, presenters. And uh, thank you for the organizing uh, this session. And I guess that here you will see the next uh, uh, session. I don't know if. Uh, um, Andrea, do you want to add a few words? Mm, yes, hello and thank you to everybody. So here in the slide you can find the next uh, lobby and rooms for the breakout session number two. So if you want to join a different uh, room other than the one of service provider forum, I strongly encourage you to uh, drop off this call and join one of the following uh, other link that you can see on the, on the slide. So that's it. Uh, we'll be back at uh, 12 noon. Thank you.